Welcome to our, our session this morning. It's called Starsh Waiting for Starshot. Don't get Layout Builder working right now. My name's Rod Martin. Uh, the link on the screen, rodsurl.com, that's a Drupal site that I made in five minutes to just handle my own URL redirects. I got tired of tiny URL not being available for the things I wanted, so it's a simple Drupal site that uses the redirect module. Layout Builder is where you'll get the slides and the 38-page PDF for today. It has everything is in the PDF, the document, uh, including all the links I'm going to talk about and all the configuration that I'm going to talk about as well. A little bit about me before we get started. Um, on uh, Drupal.org, I'm Rod Martin, Twitter, pretty much everywhere, I'm Rod Martin. I couldn't get RodMartin.com. Big football player owns it, won't give it up. I, I challenged him to a duel, but he said no. So it's I'm Rod Martin, .com and everywhere else. I've been teaching Drupal now for 13 years since uh, DrupalCon Chicago. Uh, I've been privileged to speak at a lot of different DrupalCons, Drupal camps uh, around the world. Uh, my favorite one probably was uh, DrupalCon LA. I won a Drupal hockey jersey because I still play hockey a couple of times a week. Um, I'm very passionate about ambitious site builders and new people to Drupal. I'm teaching the Absolute Beginner's Guide tomorrow for the full day, and that's my passion. Um, and so I, I love site builders, don't get me wrong, I love themers and back-end developers too, but, and I teach them as well. Um, for Acquia, I teach the five-day Drupal immersion class. For Promit, I do the same, as well as all of their con uh, custom content editor training. I, so I teach, um, for Acquia, I teach their, uh, what's it called? What's their drag and drop interface? Just went right out of my brain. Whatever it is. It'll come up in a minute. I teach that. I teach uh, Provis for Promit Source and things like that. Um, I've got a website called DrupalHelps.com that supports what we're talking about today. You're welcome to look at it. And I've got a few YouTube videos out there as well. So I've uh, been privileged to teach uh, probably about 50,000 people over the last 13 years. I live in Dillsboro, Indiana, a thriving metropolis. I rode my motorcycle here. Um, the only s traffic jams we get in Dillsboro are the occasional cow or deer on the road. I almost got killed several times coming here. Like I said, I play hockey a couple of times a week. That's that Drupal jersey I won in, in Los Angeles. I just love that thing. And uh, that's what I ride wherever I go, and uh, I have a blast doing it. So people are asking me, I've had this question a lot actually over the last couple of days, why this session, why now? Well, isn't Starshot coming? Yes, it is, but it's 12 months away, probably. Maybe even longer before it's actually usable. I am super excited about Starshot and specifically Experience Builder. I think it's gonna change everything. Uh, it's gonna make what we're gonna talk about today pretty much obsolete, but I figure we've got 12 months to play with it before that happens. And uh, so here's how it came about. Uh, three things in my training of all of the people that I've trained, and I do enterprise right down to single people building their own Drupal site. The number one complaint I have heard through the years, especially since Drupal 8, 9, and 10, is there's just no way to do layout as a site builder. In WordPress, I've got Elementor. In Joomla, I've got SP Page Builder, which is kind of like Elementor for Joomla. In Drupal, I've got yeah, and so, hence the reason for Starshot, I think, one of the reasons, uh, but this problem where there's just no way to efficiently build landing pages without code, and even organize your structured content without code. And so Layout Builder came along, but it's clunky out of the box, um, and, and it just didn't do the job. So I heard this over and over again. The other reason I built this is because for uh, right now I'm moving 30 other content management system sites, <coughs> Joomla, into Drupal. And so I built a starter site, not a starter kit, not a distribution, my own starter site that I can spin up in four minutes and it has all my content types. It's got the WYSIWYG editor properly configured, the media manager properly configured, but most importantly, it's got a full-fledged layout builder that I'm gonna share with you today. By the way, at the end of the session, I'm giving it to you, the whole shoot and match. It's yours, you can play with it, you can tear it apart, you can do whatever you want with it, and you'll be able to spin it up in about four minutes. So stay tuned and don't leave. There we go, a little hook to keep you here. Um, so that was a big deal for me. And then the third thing was I got COVID over Christmas. I had nothing to do except sit in a chair. 
And so over about a week, I built this. Uh, it is core and contributed modules only, no code except CSS, which isn't code, really. Uh, and so what this session is going to be is to explain how I built it and uh, what specifically I did to get it there. And as Mike Anello is so popular in saying he hates, if there's one more session on the best way to use Layout Builder, he'll scream, right? <clears throat> he said that in Florida. This is not the best way to use Layout Builder. This is one way to use Layout Builder, and it's really working for everything that we're doing, moving 30 sites into Drupal very quickly. Now, mind you, fairly small, but a couple that are around 7,000 nodes. So, you know, small to medium-sized sites into Drupal pretty quickly. As I mentioned, one of my um, passions is the ambitious site builder. Dries has uh, made this pretty popular over the last couple of years. And now, of course, with Starshot, that's becoming even more prevalent. Uh, this is the site building workflow that we use in our training. This was developed for OS training. I work for, I'm a contractor for three companies, and I don't have a non-compete clause, which is great. So I do video training for OS training. Uh, my YouTube channel is on OS training, uh, so if you Google OS tips from OS training, we release a new Drupal video about once a week. Uh, and this is the site building workflow that we use in all of our training. And it's obviously, if you've been around Drupal, this is obviously pretty familiar, right? You start with content types, you add fields, modules, taxonomy, you manage your permissions, you get workflows or workspaces working now. By the way, you can't use workspaces and workflows at the same time. I've got a video on that at OS Tips. Um, and then you figure your, configure your permissions, your paths, and finally you get to your layout, your views, and your blocks. And that's where, again, it tends to fall apart. By the way, if you're heavily investigate, invested in paragraphs, this was a session at Drupal Camp Asheville. I can't recommend it enough. Uh, again, it's in the slides, it's in the PDF. You can get it later, but it's really worth watching. So what about Starshot? Well, Starshot is gonna change everything especially Experience Builder. If it does everything they say it's going to do, then literally I think most third-party layout tools like Site Studio for Acquia, Provis or DUSWDS for Promit Source, A10's Layout Builder, all of them are gonna go away uh, from public use. Now again, I think some of these uh, people or some of these companies are still going to use them. I, I don't see Acquia banning Site Studio. They put way too much money into it and it's pretty advanced. It's a great tool. But for anybody outside of those ecosystems that doesn't want to install a distribution, that doesn't want to be tied to a company, Starshot's going to be amazing. If you need more information on it, go to Mike Herschel's uh, session this afternoon at 3 o'clock. Uh, it's going to be really awesome. He's going to give us a terrific update on it. I think Starshot's going to change everything. However, it ain't here yet, and I need to make Drupal sites now. So again, that's what we're talking about. So as I mentioned, this is a um, core and contributed module approach only. No custom code, no single directory components, no components of any kind. I wanted to make it for site builders who don't want to get into the code. Is it as efficient as single directory components? Probably not. But it works really well, and I think you can make it do just about anything you want. This is the list of the modules that I'm going to talk about. Bootstrap Layout Builder, Layout Builder Blocks, Styles, Restrictions, Reorder, Section Library, Modal, Direct Add, Save, and Edit. Now, why those? Because they offered the least amount of friction in getting everything working. Along with that, I built custom block types. One of the best parts of Drupal 10, of course, and now Drupal 11, is the ability to have custom entities and custom entity types. So now I just built a whole bunch of custom block types with fields that I used, believe it or not, I used Layout Builder to lay out the blocks and then insert them into Layout Builder for a page or a node. It works incredibly well. Uh, so that's what we're going to talk about. Before we get there, let me just kind of give us an overview of where we are uh, in all together here. Uh, this is the PDF that you're going to download if you get it. So again, just some of the current site building approaches. Uh, site Studio is probably one of the best, to be honest. You have to be an Acquia customer. You're locked into a vendor. Um, and while it can 
can use fields of a content type. Most implementations that I've taught on and seen don't do that. So you kind of lose the whole structured data approach when it's not set up properly, I think. And it's very difficult to configure as a site builder. It is beautiful and it is amazing, but it's expensive and you're locked in. And there won't be an upgrade path to anything outside of, of Site Studio. Uh, DXPR has their version of a layout builder and it's actually really excellent. Uh, it's very clean, it's easy to use, it's probably the most like Elementor that I've seen. Um, I, the pricing is reasonable, really reasonably priced. Again, uh, works seamlessly with their free theme that I love, DXPR theme. In fact, that's the only theme I use anymore. Uh, more intuitive than Aqueous Site Studio, it's not free, but again, you're locked into a vendor like all of these. Uh, and as I mentioned, it's really, really nice to use. A10 has a one called Mercury. You can't even get a demo or you can't get pricing without asking for a demo. So I don't know how good it is. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not doing that. The only other one that I really like that's open source is OpenY. And if you've never investigated this, this is the YMCA's open source page builder based on layout builder and contributed modules. They spent over a million dollars putting it together and it's free to not just YMCA's, but anybody. You can go and get it right now and implement it. And they have um, fantastic uh, um, modules. Every component is a downloadable module. So while it is a component-based system, it's modules. So it's not like you have to know code to implement it. You don't have to know any code to implement it at all. The con is it's a distribution. Uh, how many love distributions? Yeah, nobody loves distributions. They suck, right? Pardon, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Um, they're hard, they're terrible. You can't upgrade, you can't, you know, right? So it is a distribution. To me, that's a downside. Um, the other one that I'm actually doing a session on this afternoon is Promit Sources Provis. Uh, we're introducing DUSWDS this afternoon. Um, it's built on Layout Builder and Contributed Modules. It does use components. It's currently free. They're, they have a paid version for government sites. It is really good, but again, not upgradable on your own. Uh, it's, it's a distribution, and it's, so again, it's not really configurable by a site builder. You've got to dive into the code to do that. So again, <clears throat> pardon me, um, this is uh, the starter site that you can use today. It's rodsurl.com slash starter site. When you download it, when you click that link, it'll take you to a Gitpod, um, a browser, where it'll spit on a Gitpod repository, and it's completely set up for you in four minutes. You will need a GitHub account and to log into it. Um, so you provide your GitHub credentials, and four minutes later, you've got the entire site that I'm about to show you. It's yours, you can use it. Gitpod is completely free. You can set up 50 sites uh, for free, 50 hours per month for free. It's how we do all of our training. The username and password for the, to the site is admin and admin, and I'm about to show it to you. Uh, and again, it's yours if you want it. A uh, huge thanks to Ofershal, who's a developer down in Florida. He's the guy that set up Drupal on Gitpod initially, and I've just kind of forked it and done my own thing with it. So, so here's what you're going to get with start, the starter site that we're going to talk about. Um, again, uses DXPR theme, updated text formats, media link it, button styles, removed the image upload field. Nobody uses the image upload field anymore, right? Right, right, right? No, we don't use it anymore, no. Google Map Block with a simple GMAP module, which I absolutely love. Um, an updated media manager with usage statistics and usage, uh, proper usage, uh, as well as keywords for all of your media and things like that, and a whole ton of pre-configured um, uh, um, um, image styles using uh, focal point. And so a lot of fun there. I do use Acid Injector. Don't scream at me, okay? So here's why I use Acid Injector instead of pushing all of the CSS and things to the theme. Um, because I constantly change it. And until I actually launch a site, I don't want to commit that to the theme. So I use Acid Injector as a intermediary way of adding all the CSS I need for a particular site. I love Acid Injector. I just think it's one of the best modules ever. You can, you can target where you want the CSS or JavaScript to be loaded. And again, you'll be able to go in and see all of that. So beyond the basics of core layout builder, um, I've also 
Uh, there's some notes in here. You can grab uh, some helpful tutorials there. So again, I've already talked about which ones we're going to add. Honorable mentions. I need to mention a few of these. Uh, Layout Builder Boolean and Layout Builder Browser. Uh, I use Direct Add because it's, it, there's no configuration to it. To use a uh, Layout Builder browser where you click a button and it gives you a list of the blocks you want to add, you have to actually manually add those and add the images and you can't just upload the image. You've got to put it in a file location and target it. Yeah, that's, that's friction to me. So direct add, as you'll see, is I think better. Um, there's a couple of others, uh, layout paragraphs, and that's what that other session is on. If you're into paragraphs, strongly recommend it. And there is one layout tool, and for the life of me, it's just gone right out of my mind, that is a drag and drop that's supposed to be really beautiful. I've never been able to get it to work. I know people who have, and I don't know why I can't get it to work. So again, friction, I didn't use it. All right, uh, and then there's the reasons why I used what I did. So let's start with the most important one, Drupal uh, Bootstrap Layout Builder. So what this does is it adds responsive grid support UX enhancements to Drupal Core's Layout Builder, and it supports Bootstrap 3, 4, and 5. Uh, this is foundational, and what it does is when you add a new section, instead of giving you just one, two, three, or four column, it now uses Bootstrap. It also allows you to add background images, background colors, and background video in the section itself, and offers you the ability to add custom classes, uh, and add classes anywhere throughout the entire section. It's phenomenal, it's, it's foundational. Now last year, uh, it used a deprecated module that's been fixed. If you've ever tried it like six months ago, there was a real big problem with it, that's been fixed. Um, there's a lot of configuration options. Like I said, when you add a, uh, a column or a, a, a row or a section, you can choose one, two, three, or four, or up to 12 columns. Layout Builder Restrictions is really good because you get rid of all that other stuff Really, are you going to add a 12-column row to your... I don't think so. Uh, so this is really fantastic. One of the things that it allows you to do as well is configure all of the colors of the backgrounds and the text. And it's literally just adding the CSS with the button, the button CSS and the color that you want. And you can completely customize the background, the, uh, background colors and text colors that would be used in a particular section. So there's a huge amount going on here, and it's really great. When you're actually using it, there we go. When you're actually, <clears throat> pardon me, this is Drupal layoutbuilder.com, but I've got it locally, just I wasn't sure about the internet. Um, when you're using it, again, under content authoring, and uh, where is it, bootstrap layout builder. You can determine uh, whatever breakpoints you want. You can assign layouts to all of those breakpoints. You can add styles for background, typography, spacing. If you don't check any, all apply. So you can limit what you allow a content editor to see and do. And then under settings, uh, literally it's just live preview. Then under configuration and <clears throat> uh, content authoring and bootstrap styles is where then you define all of the CSS classes for the styles that are being used. And then in your CSS, you just apply the style. Um, configuring this the first time is daunting. Once you've done it a couple of times, it's brain dead simple. So that's Bootstrap Layout Builder. I can't imagine uh, doing this without it. And it's pretty amazing, like borders, shadows, and animation, and more. <coughs> Uh, so in the book here, I've given you just a quick breakdown on it. Uh, this applies just for sections, not, not blocks. We'll see blocks in just a minute. Uh, so this is, um, that's fixed now. So you can get rid of that. It used to use, no, I'm sorry, that is correct. It used to use a different um, submit module. Now it uses iframe modal. It works really good, but here's the deal, and check the book when you're going to use this. You cannot use it. Uh, in those four areas because this it's just a mess so uncheck those four top boxes when you configure it and you're good to go and again I give you the link to the issue queue on that the next most important one is layout builder blocks layout builder blocks is to blocks what bootstrap layout builder is to sections 
It allows you to add background typography, spacing borders, shadows, and animation to your individual blocks. And so with custom block types that I'll share with you in just a bit, you can apply all of these formats and styles to them uh, in very, very quickly. It's literally, you know, just pick a color, pick a background color, pick a text color, uh, pick the text alignment, and you're good to go. <clears throat> It integrates seamlessly with Layout Builder, um, with Bootstrap Layout Builder, and again, you can also pre-configure which ones you want to allow and which ones you don't want to allow a content editor to use. So again, everything that I just said about the section applies to the blocks. The next one is uh, Layout Builder Styles. This is by a guy named Brian Osborne out of Princeton University. Uh, I train, I did the training for their web team about six years ago. We had a chat in the quad. I, I was in the quad of Princeton. That was pretty cool. I, I couldn't have gone to Princeton if my life depended on it. But here I am sitting in the quad talking to their director of IT. I said, Brian, this is a really great module. He was, we were talking about this one. He said, I said, you should contribute it back. So he went through it and the university allowed him to contribute it back and this is phenomenal. What it does is it allows you to set up styles where a content editor can now check a button and apply a style to either a section or a block that you've pre-configured. Again, no code. You just set up the style, give them a checkbox, which happens to just show up automatically, and it can then apply the style to the block or the section that you have created for it. And so again, in the background as a site builder, you have absolute control over what a content editor can do. They're not applying custom code or your, their own CSS anywhere. They're certainly not giving you Comic Sans Serif font styles, right? You've locked it down, and this is one way it works, and it works incredibly well. You can enforce the selection of no more than one style or allow any number of styles to be selected in a section or a block, and you can restrict them uh, to be on specific block types or specific sections and layout types. It's really, really great. Um, when you're using it, it looks like this. Uh, you define whether it's a section or a block and define the style, you give it a name and the class and then when you're in the um, actual, uh, when you're actually using it, it basically just shows up as a little checkbox either in the section or the block and a content editor can select that and apply those styles. Now they don't know what they're applying, uh, that's where training and documentation comes in. But I've got, for instance, uh, rounded corners one here. So when I have a card block with a colored background or an image background, it will round the corners. They don't have to do anything, it just rounds the corners and it's that simple. Um, I've also got one called hide the section. One of the, my frustrations when I built this was I couldn't, I had to delete sections for them to not show up on the page anymore. Well, not anymore, because Drupal has a built-in class called visually hidden. So, applied the class, section gone. And now it's still on the page, it's just not visible anymore. Uh, on my church website, I use this everywhere because uh, you know we've got our major activities. You've got Easter, Christmas, blah, 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 blah. And now I'm not having to delete those sections, I just hide them and then make them show up again next year. It's fantastic. And again, it's built in with just a little bit of CSS. So, Layout Builder Styles. The next one is Layout Builder Restrictions. Again, least amount of friction here for me. This was fantastic, uh, although this may not be necessary for much longer. Apparently it's coming to an early version of Drupal 11 where restrictions are built into core. Yeah, I don't know if it's there yet. I haven't looked at 11 yet very much at all, but it provides a configurable UI for restricting blocks and layouts so content editors can or can't use them. It's role-based, so again, you're set to go depending on the content editor level. You can restrict, most importantly, you can restrict what uh, sections are available for them. You don't want somebody inserting a 12 column section into a node, right? Come on. So you just give them one through three or one through four and that's all they can use. You can also, using this module, restrict if you go down and say insert another block and you remember on Layout Builder it just lists everything, menus, users and all that junk. Yeah, you can restrict, pardon me, you can restrict all of that so they never see any of that. They only see what you want them to see. So layout builder restrictions, very little friction here. You, you, know, you turn it on, tell it what you want to restrict, and boom, it just works. Another one I really, really like is layout builder reorder. So uh, let me just head back over to this page here real quick <clears throat> and click layout. 
What this does is it allows you to have literally move up and move down buttons on your sections. Uh, that's not built into core and it's really frustrating because when you create a section, <laughs> you can't move it. You can, you can only delete it. Well, this lets you move it up and down. Now, is it as good as Site Studio? No, it's not. Site Studio allows you to actually click a button and drag it to where you want it. But again, this is free. It's free. It's free. So it's, it works for me. I can click four times and save $10,000. To me, that, that's kind of worth it. So moving up and down is just literally as easy as clicking down and it moves it down. And it's just that simple. It will reorder it uh, any way you want here. And did I just lose that? There we go, okay. So something's weird, because that's, oh, there we go. Um, again, uh, an up or down link on your screen, you, uh, literally you install it and it just works. I added a little bit of CSS here to uh, format it a little nicer, because when I first installed it, these were kind of on top of each other and it looked pretty bad. So um, quickly just, uh, I think one line of CSS fixed that. I could have made them buttons, but you know, whatever. You can go ahead and do that if you want. Section library to me is one of the best and most important pieces to this, other than maybe Bootstrap Layout Builder. This gives me the ability to save sections and reuse them later on. So here on the screen, I've got an import from library button, and I have saved a bunch of my sections. You can also save entire pages, which is pretty cool. So if you're a marketer and you have a base template for marketing pages, you save it once and you can reuse it over and over. So if I wanted to insert this full to width column text image, boom, there it is. And now I just configure the text and the image. I just go ahead and add them in. And it works and it's fantastic and it saves me all kinds of time. You can save as many as you want. In Site Studio for Acquia, this is called a helper, if you're familiar with that. Here in this version of Layout Builder, it's Section Library. And again, you can see all of your libraries <clears throat> under Content, Layout Builder Library. They're all listed here for you. And again, all I did was just take a screen capture and upload the image. There's an upload field with this one, which is really nice. I don't have to actually manually upload it to a folder. I can upload it on the fly as I'm building it. Um, what I would suggest, you know, when you're, if you're building this for reuse by a lot of people, is as a site builder, you pick the ones that you want to allow them to do, and then uh, depending on, obviously, your content editors and their skill set, either restrict it or not. Um, let them choose one, but not add to it. That's, again, completely up to you. So I've added some of the ones that I really like, like there's the full demo page there, there's a three column latest news layout, and that, that's a view, it automatically gets the latest three news items. Uh, there's a stat group, the text image card. This is a really neat one, two column with large padding around the text, again, that kind of stuff is just built in, it's just padding and spacing around a, a text box on the left hand side. And then there's the upcoming events view that's also pre-configured and, and can be easily added. Um, the last, or not the last one, but the next one is Layout Builder Modal. Uh, how many of you really love the ability to try and add body text when it's shoved over to the right and you can't see more than two lines? Isn't that great? Layout Builder Modal to the rescue. When you use Layout Builder Modal, everything opens in a modal window. Now again, there's a couple of gotchas here with this. You can't, um, uh, there's a couple of things that don't work. So again, I've configured those properly. But um, one thing that's a bit of a gotcha, and I'm not sure if this is still true because I haven't tested it this week. In the body field, when you switch to code mode, it switches to one line, and you can't do anything about it. It's just one line of code. So if you switch to code view, you're, you're, you're gonna struggle a bit, but in WYSIWYG editor view, it's fine. Um, that's the alternative I was trying to remember earlier. Layout Builder Plus is the alternative here. I've never been able to get it to work. Anybody using it? No, okay, well that says that, all right. <clears throat> So like I said, everything opens in a modal window, and so now you have all the space, and this is definable. You can define it to the width and height you want on your screen, you know, 70%, 80%, whatever you want, and uh, all of your fields will show up here in the modal window, including media, file, man uh, your, you know, media, media as far as images and videos, all of that stuff will come up and pop up in a modal window, really super helpful. Uh, the configuration is under user interface and layer builder modal. 
Uh, and it, lay, it just eliminates the ad block layout on the right hand side, makes life so much better. Layout Builder Direct Ad is another one that I really like. Uh, this one gives me a button, and let me just demonstrate it here for you. Instead of having the um, ad block, it gives me a listing of my block types that I can directly add here. So instead of adding block, going up, create custom block, choosing the block type, boom, it's right here. So I can literally just click and it'll insert a block for a Google map. Um, there is an alternative here, Layout Builder Browser, but as I mentioned, you have to manually upload the images for this into a folder and then uh, tell, that, tell the uh, browser where that folder is. Um, this is, again, frictionless, and that's, that was big for me. I don't want friction. The only problem with this is if you get more block types, a few more block types than I've got, it starts to get a little long. So on a laptop, it might be a bit tough. On an iPad, it's definitely tougher. But uh, by the way, this is totally works on your iPad. Nothing doesn't work. You can configure, you can build, you can do everything on a mobile device with this setup. Um, what happens when you click more? More? Oh, well then it goes, thank you, I'm glad you asked. Then it gives me all of my blocks. <clears throat> Reusable basic blocks. And I've restricted, I've restricted everything on this, so uh, it gives me that list, but it also, you can also go to, um, uh, if I hadn't restricted it, it would show up with all of the other blocks that are there. Yeah. <coughs> Pardon me. So again, rather than uh, clicking add custom block and selecting the block, it just comes up much, much quicker. Really, really nice. No configuration, it just works. Um, like I, and thank you for asking that. So when it's not using the pre-built blocks, there's a more button at the bottom and you can then choose any of the other blocks that you might have, um, like a basic block or copyright and things like that. Um, Layout Builder Save and Edit. I'm a huge fan of this. Um, I've done this in custom, in my content types as well as in my Layout Builder. It just adds a save and, a save and keep editing. How many of you love to save it and it goes out and then, oh, I gotta go back in. What a pain in the neck. Well, this saves it and lets you stay in it. There's one for nodes, for, for adding nodes. Save and continue. Uh, I mean, WordPress and Joomla have had this for 15 years. So I kind of thought this is a must have. It's such a tiny little thing, but it's such a huge time saver because we all know what happens when you lose your browser, right? You've just lost 10 hours of work or whatever. So this is a really handy one. Save and edit, really, really great. And again, it's install and it just works. Say the name of that one again. Save and layout builder, save and edit. Yep, and I have, I've got the list in the book that you're gonna download as well. Um, again, oh, so you install it and then you just tell it what node types you want it to work on. Um, so if you have a landing page node type like I've got here, you can just say it, use it there, but I've got it installed for all of them. <clears throat> Pardon me, I've just got this thing going on. Anyway, we've got about, I do want to leave time. By the way, if you've got questions, ask. go ahead and ask them. Uh, but I do want to, we're done at quarter two, right? 9.45? Somebody? Yeah, okay. So here are the custom block types I built. Uh, how many of you built custom block types? Yes, yeah, it's, it's brain dead simple now. <clears throat> uh, I think it's one of the best upgrades to Drupal over the last um, eight, nine, and 10 and I really love what they're doing with blocks and block types. So I've got the basic block, obviously, a card block. What this one does, this has um, a, a media field, a body field, and, a, uh, and that's it. Um, and so when you, in, when you set up a, a card block, it looks something like this. Uh, let me get to it. These are three card blocks. So this is one block type, and all I've done is it's just pure CSS that gives that hover state. The top one has got the title and the body, and the button styles are built into the body with the styles in the WYSIWYG editor, which I think is better than a button style, a button um, block type. And then the second one has a PDF document embedded, and the third one is using the media. The media is automatically uh, at the top with padding, and so this is preset with CSS, and again, uh, pretty flexible there uh, as well. 
Uh, this is a button without a button style. Um, there's the files list block type, which just lists as many files as you want in a really nice table format. The Google Map module is uh, fantastic. I love this module. You enter one line address and it creates a Google Map for you and you don't need to use the Google API and you don't need to pay for it, which is, I think, the best part. I use it everywhere. Well, I've got a block type for that. What's in the block type? The title, the body field, and the text field that gets converted to the Google Map. The heading block type is exactly what it sounds like. It's the title gets certain CSS to it, and the body field, if you add anything in, it gets additional CSS to make the more heading-like. The image embed allows you to embed images of any size. So um, that's the image embed field, and it will produce a full width image, uh, pretty simple. The large banner with centered text looks like this up here at the top. Sorry, I know I'm bouncing around just a little bit. There's the um, banner with the layout, uh, with the center text. There's the banner with a center text as well. And there's a banner with the text on the left. Uh, those are the styles I really like. Oh, I'm so sorry, thank you. Sorry about that. This is the banner with the text on the left. And this is just a two column layout uh, in Layout Builder in a block that's inserted into another layout. Simple as that. Uh, and then that's the center text banners, one with an ba image background, one with a color background. And again, these buttons are in the body field styled with um, in the WYSIWYG editor, uh, in um, CK Editor 5. That's my preferred way of doing buttons. I think it works great. Uh, and then a stats card, simple stats card there, I won't bother showing you. This is the two column layout I mentioned. Um, where am I here? So that's the image, that's a two column layout with an image on the left, text on the right, with a solid uh, color background. That's the, sorry that keeps fading, I've got them sliding in. Um, that's just one with an orange background, same kind of idea uh, as well. And uh, this is just another one with a, a big set, a lot of padding and margins around the block. Again, all customizable because of that wonderful um, module that allows me to do spacing and background colors, background images, and background videos as well. And then again, uh, a 100% responsive video. One of the things that drove me crazy with the um, video media field was, you, you remember when you add a media field to your content type and it's a tiny, tiny little thumbnail? Three lines of CSS. Three lines of CSS is all you need to make it 100% responsive for the for the container that it's in. And the CSS is in, the, is in this the starter site that I'm gonna give you. All right, so we are quickly running out of time. Here's what's missing. Um, buttons, like I said, I created nine button styles in the WYSIWYG editor, that's my preferred way of doing it, because then I get to use the proper link it module in the WYSIWYG editor that lets me link to any node on the site. Why link it is not in core, I have no idea. Uh, I don't have a slideshow. I personally hate slideshows, although I have clients who love them. I use Views Slideshow for that. Uh, I am not incorporated into the Layout Builder because, well, I hate slideshows. Um, I don't have an accordion set up in it yet. That's one of the, that's one of my to-dos. Um, and then a more flexible card layout. Eh, I like the card layout I've got. I, I probably need a few more styles in there to make it really, really flexible. Uh, so if any of you want to go ahead and do that, let me know, and I'll incorporate it. I'll even give you credit. Um, so again, in notes here, there's some stuff on how I style that. Uh, I am no CSX, CSS expert, so you might look at my CSS and go, oh, Rod really is terrible at that. <laughs> it works, don't bug me. Okay, so there we go. Um, all right, so um, here's what I'd like to give you today. Back up at the top, I've, I've got a link here for you. And where on earth is it? Yeah, here it is here. So if you go to rodsurl.com slash starter site, uh, you'll be able to, if you have a GitHub account, it will click that link, it'll set up this entire Drupal layoutbuilder.com site for you. You'll be able to play with it, do whatever you want with it, it's yours to use as you see fit. Uh, if you want to improve it, all I'm asking, all I would love is I would love you to tell me what you did to improve it. Uh, and I'd happily incorporate it. And um, if, if you would 
if you would like. If you don't want to share, that's fine too. Uh, I'm pretty easy about it. I would love feedback on it. Um, if you go to drupalhelps.com, there's a feedback form. And uh, I'm uploading tutorials and videos there as I make them. It's not super great yet, but uh, I'm adding documentation on the configuration. Honestly, guys, I did this in a week. This is not hard. It just takes time and a little bit of planning. Um, so again, take it, use it, have fun with it. We have about five minutes for questions, if you have any. Otherwise, I can keep talking ad nauseum. Yes, sir. So you mentioned uh, easy to build, did it in a week. I am curious, uh, you also said that you know, uh, once you've done it a few times, it's easy. So I don't yet. Um, uh, you're not the first to ask me. I will. I will be doing that, and I'll put it on the um, on the site uh, at DrupalHelps.com. Um, that's where that's where it'll end up. So this is DrupalHelps.com. This is the site I kind of built to just kind of support this. Um, yeah, I'm doing this on my own. Nobody's paid me. To, I'm not sponsored by any of the companies I do work for. Literally, I got sick at Christmas, and I said, I, I need to spin up a whole bunch of sites really fast. And so that's, what I, that's, that's kind of what I did. And then it's turned into this. Uh, people have said it's helpful. You can, I'm, I'm short-circuiting. You don't have to fill out the form to get the starter site. Rodsurl.com slash starter site. It'll spin it up for you. And again, you can use it to do whatever you want with it. Gitpod is free. I do have, so if you go to, um, if you go and look up my videos on YouTube, OS Tips by OS Training, um, there is a video on how to move a site from Gitpod to a live server. And I take that through step by step. So you can build the entire site at Gitpod and then move it to a live server if you want. Uh, you can't host sites at Gitpod, so, but you can build there. We, this is what we use for training. It's what we're going to use tomorrow all day for the Absolute Beginner's Guide. So, yes, sir? Uh, you talk about uh, section library. Yes. And my question is, can I modify elements in the section library? And if so, do those cascade to all instances of that section? Okay, so when you import from the library, it is a standalone version of what's in the library. You can configure it any way you want. It will not impact the library version of your thing, which is fantastic, right? Um, one of the problems in other thing, uh, others, if we modify a helper in Site Studio, you've modified it for everybody. Yeah, that's not true here. So, and I'm not sure. I'm, yeah, that may not be a right statement, but okay. Any other questions today, sir? Yes, uh, the and I should have been repeating the questions. I'm so sorry. Is there a module to restrict the block types per section? Uh, you mean the, the custom block types? Uh, or the regular? You know, I don't know if Layout Builder restrictions will do that or not. Um, does anybody know if Layout Builder restrictions will restrict the block types? I think you can restrict them via roles and permissions. So if I log in as a content editor with a lower role, those block types won't be accessible to me. Uh, I don't know if they'll show up in the list or not and just get, I'm sorry, you can't do that, uh, or they just won't show up in the list. My guess would be they just won't show up in the list, but I've not tried that. Anything else? Yes? Which module was it that added the additional styling? Added the? The additional styling. The additional styling. So that's a bootstrap layout builder for sections and layout builder blocks for blocks. And then you can yeah, do all that styling. The question was what modules do all the styling um, for sections and blocks? And those are the two. Again, download the notes. Everything's the PDF that I've had up here on the screen. That's what you're going to download from uh, rodsurl.com slash layout builder. The slides and the notes are, are there. Yes? Oh, wow, I'm not going to be able to hear you. Hang on. Oh, okay. Can you still style for the template? The answer is no. Template overrides break layout. So in the hierarchy of things, in the hierarchy of things, it is um, you know, field arranging your fields, 
layout builder, template overrides. Template overrides will always break layout builder because layout builder just takes over the content array and template overrides split that array up and do things with it. So you can use it on both on the, both on the same site, you just cannot use it on the same content type. So if you have a landing page content type that uses layout builder and then you want to use a uh, template override, you will break layout builder. Yeah, that's the cascade there. That's a great question, so thank you for asking that because that's confusing to some people for sure. Yes? If I have a site that's actively running right now, yep. So, great question. You've got a site already built and you want to add this to it. What I would recommend is take everything, see how it's done, and then configure your site. You can't just kind of dump this, although probably through configuration sync, you can probably grab a bunch of it from, from config. I'm not sure how much. But again, once you look at it and kind of pull it apart, like literally, if you know site building and if you've used Layout Builder, an hour of just looking at this you'll be able to implement it into your own site. And you should be able to just install the modules and configure them, right? There's no custom code, there's no custom configuration, it's core and contribute. That's why I built it this way, exactly for that reason. So, um, I, I know it's not, again, I can know, it's maybe not the best way to do it, but it's sure a decent way to do it. And I really like it. Uh, and it's, it saves me 10 hours per site that I built. And I'm building a lot of sites right now. Anything else? These have been great questions. Thank you. Uh, they're insightful, so I appreciate it. Yes? I'm just wondering how I style it on one site and how use that site to the same styles on another. To take the styles from one site and build it into another? Honestly, yeah, just, I mean, just copy the CSS over. That's what I do. Um, that's one of the reasons I use Acid Injector. So all the styling for all the custom block types are in Acid Injector. So when you go, it's under Configuration Development, Acid Injector, CSS. I've got a uh, layout. I've got, so I've got the uh, bootstrap section, a layout section, and a button section, and a couple of others in a video section. Just pull the CSS out, steal it. Um, I've documented as much of the CSS as I can. So there's comments all the way through, mostly for me because I won't remember six months from now what it does. <laughs> so hopefully I've documented it enough. And again, feel free to reach out Rod at PromiseSource.com or on Slack, I'm on Drupal Slack, I'm Rod Martin. Reach out and yell at me for something I did poorly. I'm okay with that. We were talking earlier, I don't have all the answers. I'm happy to be helped, corrected, and, and um, instructed as needed. You mentioned Acid Injector, I've never heard of it before. What? Acid Injector is a module that will allow you to inject CSS or JavaScript anywhere. Um, so here I'll show it to you real quick. We're, we're just about out of time, folks, but um, this will take more than a second. I love Acid Injector. So here's the CSS that I built for, the, for this. And literally it is, you can add any injectors you want, create the CSS in here, and then you can define where it shows up. So typically, themers will put all of this in the theme, yeah. right? Which is where it should go. But in a pinch and in development, Acid Injector is fantastic. That's awesome. Yeah, it's really good. Perfect. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I'm not a developer, so. No, you're fine. That's, this, this, this is not for developers. Yeah. Uh, so, if uh, Layout Builder is being built right now, yes. how easy it is. Oh, what a great question is. Are we going to be able to operate? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, go to my commercial session this afternoon on Starshot. Starshot is promising that Layout Builder will be, you can move from Layout Builder to Experience Builder. Core. That's the promise. The hope is that any contributed module will also be movable to Experience Builder. So, I'm so glad you asked that because I meant to say, um, this is super encouraging to me, which says all this work right now may not go to waste when Experience Builder comes out. There might be an upgrade path. They might. We don't know, because they don't even know what Experience Builder is going to be yet. They're still working on it, right? They're still kind of getting their ideas around. So the, the commitment is core to core, absolutely. Contributed to uh, Experience Builder, hopefully. 
And even if not, I'll wait six months after the Spirit's build is built to wait till it's ready to do all that extra stuff. Sure. I mean, that's one of the nice things about approval. You know, we just had 11 come up. Is anyone upgraded to 11 yet? No. You know why? Because the because the uh, web form isn't compatible yet. Hello? It will be any day now, and it might be by today. When it's ready, we'll upgrade, right? But we got two years. So, I love you for that. Folks, we're over time um, by a couple of minutes. So, thank you so much for coming. Appreciate it. And, uh, I'm going to be here all day today and all day tomorrow, although I'm training tomorrow. So I'm here all day today. Come on over to the Promo booth and, and ask me questions if you've got any extra ones. Be happy to talk. Thanks. Thank you. Go. Go.